Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for the great turnout. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to give a, a quick uh, announcement for uh, Mikkel uh, Marin. On, we're looking for OSM Foundation members. We need more of them to help keep the community growing. So anybody interested in OSM Foundation, uh, please see Mikkel. Uh, lots of great stuff coming from that. And the more we participate, the better. He's right there in the back waving his arms. Um, but otherwise, I'm just going to try to tee this up and get out of the way for the folks that did all the work on it. Um, but basically, I want to highlight some of the work that we've been doing as a team at Digital Globe to try to open up access to satellite imagery to do machine learning and other cool analytical techniques that can hopefully help fuel OpenStreetMap. Um, and myself, Pramukta, and Chris will be, uh, will be all talking. We're going to be a little ambitious, try to do some tag team wrestling and swap in and out. Um, uh, we'll see how that works, uh, but I just wanted to tee it up kind of with uh, a couple of bigger picture questions, right, of, you know, do machines help or hurt OSM in the grand scheme of things? As we programmatically build these things, do we run the risk of disrupting the community? Um, and how do we keep people engaged and participating in that? And what's the right balance of machines and humans on the ground uh, to make these things happen? Obviously, we're big advocates of machine learning. Oh, nothing's up there. That's weird. You guys know why it's... Not showing up. We have slided put over. Put it in projection mode. Or accordion. Let's see if that works. Cool. Sorry about that. Thanks for the uh, for the flag. Um, but yeah, this question of of what's the right balance between machines and humans when it comes to OpenStreetMap specifically. Um, you know, in the past we've kind of had questions on you know satellites in the skies or machines, right? And there's a lot of questions at the time when we first started remote mapping and tracing satellite imagery if that was going to be a good or bad thing for the community. And it ended up being a really good thing for the community, but we had to find the right balance of pulling those things together. Uh, so I've been looking as, you know, can two machines be even better, right? If we can fuel uh, the machine learning algorithms and other analytical techniques with satellite imagery, can we move the community even further along? And can we really go beyond just tracing imagery? Uh, so one of the big things, you know, we have uh, an example that we've worked to hopefully get folks excited about what you can do with machines and analytics on top of satellite imagery to add more goodness to OpenStreetMap. But really the main thing we want to push here is creating a community of learning, right? Can we make simple access patterns to allow folks to access imagery more easily? You know, as, as simple it is to get RGB images of cats and do all sorts of cool deep learning stuff, you know, machine learning is harder. There's not a lot of folks that have figured out how to do that well. So can we reduce that barrier of entry and create a better community so we can more, have more folks contributing, solving these problems, and help grow in the community overall at the same time finding the right balance with how humans and machines interact on these things. But I'll turn it over to, to Chris first, who will talk about the work we've been doing on trying to open up these access patterns and build the community. Uh, and then Pramukta will dive into the example uh, that we did for the talk on building heights. All right, cool. Thanks, Sean. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about some of the work that we're just doing at DG, right? Um, less technical, but kind of growing more technical with every word, I think I'll say. Um, I can't see the slides I'm on, so I'm going to be looking back a little bit. But So historically, the, our team, um, we've worked on a few different companies where we've built communities. We've worked on community sort of uh, platforms that enable people to come and share data. So uh, we, we did GeoCommons. We worked on ArcGIS Open Data, and, and then we started a new company called Timber where it was a data science platform. And then we joined uh, DG last year, and what we're working on is really a community of creativity, like right? trying to enable users of all skill levels to come to DG's uh, platform and write algorithms against satellite imagery as well as other data sets, right? So it's about being creative. And so, so our platform really centers around this concept of Jupyter Notebooks and then writing notebooks against easy access to data and then sharing those platform or those notebooks with each other and putting them up into our platform to then run at scale and things like that. Um, so, so this is just some screenshots of some of the things we're doing, but the idea is, is extending the Jupyter Notebooks to, um, to inject imagery really, really easily and quickly, right? So we, so we have hooks into OSM data, we have hooks into other vector data services, as well as um, our archive of, of imagery stacks, right? So users come, they write algorithms, do whatever they want to do, and then share those with each other. So um, really what we want to talk about which we don't have enough time to really get into the details of, is, is the concept in which we're trying to enable global access to immediately computable imagery, right? So um, it's a little bit more than just interacting with, with a TMS service that serves you a PNG. It's about serving users in the, in the, in the formats that they're familiar with, they're comfortable with, with interacting with, right? So for our users at this point, we're thinking about Python users, right? Um, and, and when we think about a Python user and think about imagery 
to a Python user, we, we typically think about taking these stacks of, of raw data and how do we make it available as like a NumPy array, right? So bringing the data to the skill level of a user in the format that they're, they're thinking about using it in, right? So either they're downloading a TIFF and they're accessing it and then turning it into a NumPy array, we're trying to provide a means for taking imagery, lots and lots of it, and, and provide analytical chains that can access that data at different levels of that analytical process, right? Um, let's see if I can actually explain what I mean. So, so typically when we, when, we interact with, when we interact with satellite imagery, um, we interact with PNGs through a TMS, right? So we're tracing imagery, we're drawing it, we're, we're getting this, this, um, this end result of a, of a deep chain of analytics or of, of, of transformations of that data from the raw 1B imagery, from the raw pixels, all the way to what you would actually look at on a map, right? And those are, you know, going from 1B to ortho rectification through atmosphere compensation and then pan sharpening. So sometimes this is enough, right? We can access the TMS data and we can, we can train algorithms, we can train models that, that derive data from those things. Um, but other times, having that, uh, that end result always be this pan sharpened image where we have RGB, we're not getting access to things like multispectral data and we're not getting access to the deeper information that we could pull out from the, from the data. So we start thinking about, well, how do we enable people to access all aspects of, of this processing chain in a, in a NumPy array or in a notebook? per se, right? So, so what I'm trying to convey is this concept of friendly access, right? Like how do we, how do we take access to satellite imagery, which is typically very, very heavy, right? Um, where one image is 20 gigabytes in its raw multispectral form. How do we take that and make it friendly to a user where their expertise level it can enter at a, at a point, instead of learning the, the, the depths of taking a 1B data and orthorectifying it on their own, or some end result process, enter into that step at a certain point where they're comfortable. And so where we do, what, or what we've been doing is writing these, this concept of, uh, well, not writing it, but um, employing a concept of deferred graphs, right? So if you're familiar with something like TensorFlow or other libraries, um, we can write a graph that, that allows users to access those nodes, right? And so we take raw data stored as, as chunks of, of huge files on the back end and create a, uh, a graph that tells us how to process this bit of information, right? So these are individually ad HTTP addressable chunks of data, right? And those are virtually represented as a graph, right? And that graph tells us that, well, here's how we fetch the 1B, and here's, you know, when, here's how we fetch the, the ortho, and things like that. Um, but then on the client side, right, we can mirror that graph through a deferred graph on the client that lets the user build up a massive chunk of data without actually fetching the data until they need to, right? So you can mutate these graphs, uh, index them, and warp them, and do things without ever fetching that down, right? And so this is, this is, I feel that this is a talk on its own, um, which we're hoping to give more talks about it because it's a really cool thing when you start thinking about opening up access in different ways. So um, I think we're, we're gonna shift over, over to Pramukta for the application of this concept um, about you know, what problems can we potentially solve with this pattern. So I get to be the guinea pig for this uh, particular access pattern this time around. And uh, uh, what we're going to try to do is something that's a little bit ambitious. Uh, we're going to try and uh, measure some building heights. And uh, despite the fact that I work at DG, uh, well, so uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to try and generate, or we're going to try and generate digital surface models from our 1B data. So this is not something you can do with like a TMS service, the kind of like uh, vivid imagery that uh, the really awesome work uh, previously highlighted. Uh, could support. But the issue is that even though that uh, I have been at DG for a year, I, I don't have like a photogrammetry background. Um, I, I'm very much an amateur, so I can kind of maybe relate to you guys uh, in that way, or at least to some of you or, or something. Um, <laughs> uh, so immediately when we try to do this, this thing, uh, there's a variety of challenges inherent to the problem. And there's more than we could we could put on this slide, but there's one really big one, and that's that I just don't know what I'm doing. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so, but there's one like notable missing piece on this slide, like a, a missing challenge, and that is easy access to the kind of data we need in order to get this done. Which means there's something for me to start from, and I can start to explore. If I also like walk around the cube farm at DG, I can talk to people in that community, and I can find out that the general methodology of, for doing this is something like this. First you have to select a stereo pair, which uh, there's like a million different ways of doing that that I still don't know. Uh, you ortho-rectify these things, and at this point, like, a buddy of mine from grad school would be like, I know some of those words. 
Uh, but it, that's like something that other people do. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I should use the microphone better. Um, uh, so what we do is we, we, we orthorectify those things to a variety of different constant heights, see where they match the best. Of course, match the best is another, is another thing that we've gotta, gotta figure out. Uh, but when you work through this by talking to people and Googling for the 10% of academic papers that are not behind a paywall, you end up with something that actually kind of works. And so this is a two meter, DSM around the National Mall in DC. And from that, what we can do is actually like look at the little surface, uh, use OSM-based um, uh, building footprints to do some stats on them and like try and get some building heights out of it that maybe we can contribute back to, back to the community, uh, assuming they're good, which they're probably something right now. But, but it, it's, the point is it's getting somewhere. And I started from zero. But the combination of, of um, easy access to, to computable imagery and the beginning of kind of a community around this stuff allows me to get, go from, from zero to something that's a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty decent result as a, as a first cut. Uh, and that's kind of the message I, I wanted, to, wanted to, to get to at this point. Uh, I guess I'm kind of gonna trail off a little bit because I don't really have anything else to say, but uh, um, but I think you know satellite imagery is interesting. We do a lot w with it right now. It actually comes from a pretty pretty uh, deep pipeline that's valuable at a variety of different stages. And I think I think more and more of us can 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 access uh, access information from that by learning and stuff. So. Oh yeah, and we didn't use machine learning for this, but that's okay because everybody, everybody, there's a lot of other talks on that, and that's super <laughs> valuable as well. Uh, yeah, uh, and I guess I'll plug. Uh, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so what we're hoping to do with this, outside of just play with it ourselves at work, is uh, the, the goal is to get this launched out, and we're working really hard to convince the DG lawyers and business folks to make a open global free layer available to all of y'all to work with. Not just the TMS, but the full multispectral imagery. We're negotiating how much we're going to be able to get out there, but there'll be something. And so the idea will be a free community tier where you get some free computer, free hosted notebook, free access to imagery. The trade-off is you open source and share your methods and notebooks back with the community. Um, so hopefully we'll have that out sometime early next year if uh, the arm wrestling with the lawyers uh, works out. Um, and hope you guys can check it out and give us feedback. Uh, but feel free to, uh, to grab us and ask questions. We'd love to get your ideas and feedback um, as we get it out the door. Thank you.